Okay, review and teardown of the Philips Slim Style. Uh, we looked at the Slim Style previously, but that was an A-shaped bulb. This is a so-called BR30 that's uh, meant for a, a pot light. It's a floodlight. Uh, it has a really excellent efficiency, 65 watts, uh, 650 lumens. That's 100 lumens per watt, so that's certainly absolutely state-of-the-art. Uh, however, uh, just like uh, everything else, it seems in the Slim Style, uh, a dreadful warranty. I'll just pop up the inside of the text, a little hard to read. Uh, three hours per day, three years, that's uh, just a little over 3,000 hours. So obviously Philips isn't very confident in uh, uh, this bulb having much of a life, um, which makes me suspect that is another value-engineered product, uh, which um, offers, uh, was well, quite a good price, I purchased it at, but uh, that corresponds to a relatively poor life. So let's uh, tear it down and see how it was built. Uh, so in terms of construction, it's uh, all plastic. It's a plastic body, uh, which is a single piece molded, and then the diffuser is a separate piece of plastic, but there's no evidence of any metal heat sink, nor any ridging in which to get the heat out of the bulb. One problem, of course, with this bulb is going to be actually contained within a, a, a can, basically, in a ceiling in a typical installation, so all the heat's going to rise, and basically it's uh, hard for it to escape. Uh, but just like the A-shaped bulb, basically, there's a, a real... Uh, lack of attention to uh, to heat transfer, and I suspect this is one reason why Philips isn't keen on offering much of a warranty, because uh, uh, heat's really the number one killer of electronics. Okay, uh, let's uh, pop the top off and see what's inside. Okay, uh, I'll remove the top here, and of course, uh, no surprise, it exposes a uh, metallized substrate with a bunch of uh, LED placements. Uh, you can see that they've then uh, basically, probably sonically weld the emitter array onto this uh, backing piece of plastic and there's uh, three screws and then of course the power coming in. Okay, I just saw the top off rather than trying to uh, unsolder and unweld the uh, emitter. It's actually a circuit board, it's actually um, uh, not an aluminum back substrate, again consistent with uh, what was seen on the A-shaped uh, bulb. Uh, inside the sleeve here, of course, is the controller circuit board. Uh, again, with the theme of being cheap, cheap, cheap. Uh, there is no potting compound around the board. Uh, let's uh, zoom into the subassembly here and uh, take a look at it. Okay, uh, quite an unusual topology. wasn't expecting this one. Uh, these parts here essentially uh, are the fuse and the uh, EMI filter, so you can avoid conductive emissions. A uh, bridge rectifier, which takes the AC, converts it to high voltage DC. Uh, and then you see uh, basically a lot of discrete components. There's no uh, controller I see that I was sort of expecting. Uh, it, it looks like a discrete implementation, which is uh, quite a surprise to me. Uh, most vendors seem to have now moved to uh, by a fairly sophisticated controller. Uh, what appears to be a transformer, uh, if it is a transformer, I'm not sure if this would be an isolated design, because I don't see any break in it. Uh, and uh, let's see here, the capacitors, uh, so Rubicon, which is actually a very reliable name, uh, again rated to relatively low temperatures, 105 degrees centigrade. So um, interesting. I uh, would have expected a controller by uh, by now in this kind of generation of product. So okay, so let's talk about something uh, relatively unique on this bulb here. Uh, when the bulbs with a dimmer, whether it be this dimmer here, which predates uh, LEDs, or, or even with my dimmer here, which is uh, explicitly meant for uh, LEDs. We put a microphone on the bulb, actually. You can hear a buzzing sound. I'll just inset that sound and just amplify it a bit. And, uh, yeah, it's um, it's quite annoying. Uh, in fact, I don't think I've ever seen an LED bulb other than the Slim Style where there's actually an audio uh, component to it where you actually can hear the bulb operating. Now, if I take the dimmers off, that sound seems to, uh, to go away, so it's only a dimmer-type phenomena. Okay, uh, light distribution pattern. Bulb placed here is the so-called polar graph. And what this graph tells me is most light, of course, is coming downwards, and that's exactly what you want in a, a bulb reflector type of uh, arrangement. Very little light coming out the back here. Uh, in terms of what called the beam angle, uh, that's not mentioned in the packaging, but it's relatively easy to divine. Uh, it's defined when the light intensity drops to 50% of the maximum. And when I measure that, and then of course you just draw the angle, put a protractor onto it. Uh, I'm seeing a 138 degrees, so it's a fairly broad beam, and again, it's quite acceptable and quite uh, appropriate for this kind of bulb. Okay, uh, watt hour meter, uh, it's showing a 10.1 watts, the bulb claims to be 9.5 watts, so that's a significantly higher number here. So should this meter be accurate, I would say that their claim seems to be 
uh, suspect. Uh, continuing on the theme of cynicism, uh, it's a 0.9 power factor. I believe that's the bare minimum for Energy Star requirements. Uh, certainly you could design a bulb with a 1.0 power factor. Uh, so here we have something where it's just designed right to the limits to uh, meet the bare requirements. Okay, uh, a dimmer test. Uh, the bulb just pointing upwards here. The, the camera actually struggles a bit. I'll just put it on the side. Uh, this is a, a non-LED qualified dimmer because probably that's what most people's homes have. Uh, and the bulb is quite dimmable with it actually. It's, it's quite uh, quite suitable and quite usable. So uh, that's actually a, a point to the favor of the bulb. Okay, parameter called flicker. The bulb is shining onto a solar cell which converts light back to electricity. And when you look at an oscilloscope, you can see a waveform that can tell you quickly whether or not there is flicker present. Now, this looks like a 120 hertz waveform, but uh, it's actually at a very, very low voltage. Uh, so this bulb, unlike its A-shaped counterpart, uh, has much improved flicker performance. Okay, uh, clearly a cost-effective assembly. Uh, unfortunately, of course, I think the service life uh, is a bit limited because there really isn't a lot of heat uh, management in this bulb. But that makes sense. Philips didn't invest money there because they want to keep the cost low. Um, and I suspect they understand that the vast majority of customers seem to prefer buying something which has a low entry price and perhaps a short life over buying uh, long-lived goods which have a higher entry price. So uh, Philips is making the right move here. They're actually um, meeting the needs of what consumers expect to buy. Um, now, it's a bit sad, of course, because things like LED bulbs could be much more uh, robust and they could last much longer, but then there's a higher price, and if consumers aren't willing to pay for it, uh, Philip's making the right move here with this bulb.